Hey, Rest of the Kids! I'm so excited to see you today. How has your week been? Yeah? Well, that's good to hear. Friends, today is the first day in our brand new series called Unusual. In this series, we're going to be learning about the life of King David and how God used an unusual choice to do amazing things. Are you guys excited to learn with me? Yeah? I'm excited too. But before we get to today's lesson, let's play a quick game. You guys like games, right? Good. This game is called What's Wrong? I'm gonna show you guys a picture and I need you to help me figure out what doesn't belong. There are some pretty unusual things going on in these pictures. Are you ready? Are you sure? Okay, let's look at the first picture. Okay, here it is. Hmm, let's see. Well, they are camping, so toasting marshmallows is totally normal. Do you guys see what's wrong? Wait. There's a donut where the sun is supposed to be. That's definitely not right. Did you guys get that one right? Yeah? Great job, friends. Let's see what else we can find. Hmm. Oh, wait, is that girl sleeping on the roof? How silly, do you guys see it? Great job. I think there's one more unusual thing to spot. Do you see it? Look really hard. Hmm, that's right. There it is, it's a leprechaun in a tent. I don't think he belongs on the camping trip. Wow, you guys are really good at this. How about we look at one more scene? Do you guys want to? Yeah? Okay, here it is. Ooh, I love ice skating, friends. Do you guys like to ice skate? Yeah, it's so much fun. But um, I don't think I've ever seen a sandcastle while I was ice skating. Have you? No, that's just silly. What else do you guys see? That's right, it's definitely way too cold for that flower to grow there. Wow, you guys are good at this game. I think there's only one more unusual thing to find. Do you know what it is? Yep, you got it. Someone's vacuuming the ice. That's super unusual for sure. Great job, Rest City Kids. Thanks for playing with me. Guess what's up next? That's right, it's time to worship. Friends, worship is when we get to sing and dance and praise God for all that he's done for us. It doesn't matter if you're a great singer or even a good dancer. God loves all of our worship because he loves all of us. So stand up and let's worship together. Come on.
shine upon you and be gracious to you. Lord, turn his face toward you and give you peace. As we receive, we agree. Amen. Beside you 
one. I mean, my favorite color is yellow, so I do really like these ones, but pink, that would be such a nice pop of color. And, oh, <laughs> hey, Rust City kids. I was just trying to decide which flowers I should use to decorate my float for the parade this weekend. You see, every year our town has a summer parade and normally, well, I just get to watch the parade with my family. But this year, I got asked to lead the decorating committee for the float. And this is the float that the mayor rides on. It's normally the brightest and prettiest float in the entire parade. And now I get to help create it. At first, I was a little nervous, but I know for sure that I'm the right girl for the job. You know, I only kinda sort of absolutely love arts and crafts. Heck, I even have a whole closet devoted to them. So this is the perfect opportunity for me to show off all of my skills. Hmm. Hey friends, have you ever been asked to do something that was really exciting for you because you knew that you were the right person for the job? Yeah? Well, kind of like how I feel about being asked to make the float. Today, we're going to talk about someone that God chose to do something and, well, no one really thought that he was the right person for the job. He seemed like a really unusual choice, but God knew that David had what it took to be king. He chose David for a reason. Hey friends, I think it's time for the big idea. Are you guys ready? Yeah? Okay, let me just find it. It's in my bag somewhere. Hmm, well, oh, <laughs> well, I may have bought a little too many decorations for the float. <laughs> mm, nah, there's no such thing as too many decorations. Oh, wait, I think the big idea is right here. Let me just grab it. Okay, are you guys ready? Yeah? Okay, so. Our big idea is that God uses unlikely people. Can you say that with me? Okay, one, two, three. God uses unlikely people. Wow, friends, thanks for your help. How amazing is it that God chooses unlikely people? He chooses regular people to do extraordinary things. Let's take a look at how God called David, a small shepherd boy, to do something extraordinary. Let me just find that remote. <laughs> Uh, whoops, more decorations. This float is gonna be awesome. Oh, sorry, remote. Here we go. Hi there, old chicken nuggets. It's me, Carl. And I'm Andy. Welcome to Grow TV. Welcome to Grow TV. Hosted by Carl. Where we have fun with our friends talk about Jesus, and go over everything the Bible has to offer. Now once again, welcome to Grow TV! I can't wait, I can't wait! <laughs> Thank you. Hey Carl! Hi Andy, how are you? Good, I'm, I'm good. You gonna ask me how I'm doing? How are you? <laughs> I'm so good. I'm so excited. Excited? Excited for what? Um, <laughs> I thought it was obvious. What? That I would be searching for the most elusive and sought after creature on the planet. Tony the Tiger? No, of course not. I'm talking about Bigfoot. Bigfoot? Yes, Bigfoot. It's now my mission to find him or her. You mean the mysterious eight foot creature that lives in the mountains and never been caught? Yes, ma'am. Well, even if Bigfoot was real, what makes you think you're qualified to catch such a huge, mysterious and unusual creature? How about a letter from the guy who's in charge of the government? You mean the president? Yep. Well, if that was the case, I'd probably believe you, but I highly doubt the president of the United States would ever even... Wait, that letter's from the... President of the United States asking me, Carl, to lead the search for Bigfoot. Wow, Carl, I'm literally, I'm blown away. That's, um, I'm sorry I doubted you. That's crazy. No worries, Andy. I know it must have seemed pretty unusual. And that's our theme. Yeah. Yeah, you definitely pulled a David on me. <laughs> yeah, sure. Wait, a David? What does that mean? Well, the story of David when he was anointed as king, it was very unusual for many reasons. Oh, in what ways? Well, let's look in First and Second Samuel. A David was a king, right? He was one of the most famous. Well, who was the king before David? Good question. He was a man named Saul. 
Oh, I remember him. He was the first king Israel ever had. That's right, but unfortunately, Saul was not a very good king. But God was going to give Israel a new king. <laughs> All right, well, now it's time for King David. You better watch out, King Saul. There's a new king in town. Well, what do you mean, well? Well, yes, King David was a warrior, but before he was known as King David the Great Warrior, he was known first and foremost as Young David the Shepherd Boy. Whoa, really? He sure was. King Saul was handsome, he was tall, he was a good warrior. He was basically exactly what you think a king would look like. <laughs> so you're saying I look like a king? Yeah, Carl, that's exactly what I'm saying. Carry on, my little subject. Well, God told Samuel, one of the prophets, that it was time to anoint a new king. What does, a, <clears throat> what does anoint mean? It was a special ceremony type of thing that people would do specifically for people who were picked by God or anointed by God. Got it. So God told Samuel it was going to be David? Not exactly. God told Samuel to go to Bethlehem and find a man named Jesse. Hey, I know someone that was from Bethlehem. I, it, it was a name. It, was, it like started with J. Is it Jesus? No. Okay, you keep thinking about it. Anyway, when Samuel got to Bethlehem, he found the man named Jesse, and he found all of his sons, except for the youngest son, and his name was David. But David wasn't there. What was he doing? Like I said before, he was a shepherd, so that means he was out taking care of the sheep. Awesome, so what happened next? Well, when Samuel realized that none of the sons there were the ones that he was sent by God to anoint, he asked Jesse if he had any more sons. So they went and got David? They sure did, and when Samuel met David, he knew that he was the one that God wanted to be the next king. <laughs> that's so cool! So that's the end of the story? Not even close. You see, David was around 15 years old when he met Samuel. Wait, what? 15 years old? A king can't be 15 years old? That's a child! That's a baby boy, Andy! That's what made this so unusual. Not only was David really young, but he was the youngest son, and he wasn't even a warrior like Saul. He was just a boy who took care of sheep. And he's going to lead the whole kingdom of Israel? Yep, and this was just the beginning of the amazing story of King David. He became the greatest king in the Bible and a man after God's own heart. Jesus! Oh, right, the greatest king after Jesus, of course, yeah. No, I remember now, Jesus was born in Bethlehem, so... No way. Okay, you're right. But how's that possible? Were they related? As a matter of fact, Carl, they are, and Jesus was born into the family line of David. <laughs> wow! That's unreal. There's so much about David that I didn't know. Well, good for you. We'll be talking about David all month long, but you know what, Carl? What? You know how I didn't believe right away that you were chosen to be the leader for the search of Bigfoot? Well, people found David being chosen as king to be just as unusual. I guess I never thought about it like that. David was definitely a questionable choice. It's kind of cool how God chooses people that you wouldn't quite expect. They have such important jobs like running the kingdom. It is very cool. I mean, in the Bible, we see all kinds of people that get to do amazing things for God. People who had no remarkable skills, people who had physical challenges, people without impressive backgrounds, people who might seem unlikely to do great things, but God uses unlikely people. I'm into that, sister. Wait a minute. <laughs> That's our big idea. Today's big idea is God uses unlikely people. So let's say it out loud on the count of three. One, two, two. Three. Three. God, God uses the people. people. Yeah. Right. Good job, everyone. Yeah. Andy. So I'm curious. About what? How do you expect to find a Bigfoot? Um, Andy, one does not find Big, uh, Bigfoot. Bigfoot finds you. Okay. And how will Bigfoot find you? I will be using the Bigfoot call, of course. Oh. How do you do it? Let me show you. So basically, you have to put your thumbs kind of like that, you know gently cup your hand and you just kind of like it's it's a it's a it's a it's a tight squeeze but not like too tight just kind of like eh and you just kind of you open it up a little and you just go here big foot here big foot well i don't see how that won't work <laughs> have a good week kids see you next time thank you for watching and tune in next week for a new episode of How crazy is it that God chose the smallest, most unlikely person to be the king? That's like a super important job. But God knew that David was the perfect person for the job. Hey, Taylor. Hey, Zach. Um, so I just wanted your opinion on these headbands. Yeah? I mean, they're pretty cool. They'd be perfect for the float this weekend. Really? You think so? Yeah, I do. Why are you asking? Well, you see, I got asked to do a solo in the choir for the parade, and I was uh -huh. thinking I could wear one of these. Uh, you got asked to do a solo? That's amazing! Why don't you seem more excited then? 
You've been working really hard. You deserve this solo. Yeah, I guess you're right. I just don't know if they picked the best person. What do you mean? Well, there are a lot of other great singers in our choir. Maybe one of them would just be better. I've never done a solo before, and I'm just not sure my first solo should be at the parade. The whole town's gonna be there. Yeah, I get why you're so nervous, but Zach, your choir instructor wouldn't have chosen you to do a solo if she didn't believe in you. Hey, that actually reminds me of the story of David. Oh yeah, David, the shepherd boy, right? Yeah, he was a shepherd, but he was also a king. Really? Yeah, out of all seven of David's brothers, seven, God chose David, even though David was the youngest and smallest of all of his brothers and seemed like, well, the last person God would choose to be king, God saw something on the inside of David that nobody else could. He saw in his heart. In 1 Samuel 16, 7, it says, But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not consider his appearance or his height, for I have rejected him. The Lord does not look at the things people look at. People look at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. David's brother may have been, well, bigger than him, but David loved God and had the heart of a king. So, even though David didn't look the part, mm -hmm. God knew that he was the perfect one for the job. Exactly. God loved David and he believed in him. Yes, God chooses unlikely people to do extraordinary things. Just like my choir instructor chose me to do the solo in the parade. Exactly. She saw something in me that I don't even see in myself. You got it. Zach, sometimes God sends us people to call out the greatness on the inside of us. God believes in us and, well, he knows that we're capable of doing amazing things. But sometimes we don't see the same thing he does. Wow. You know, Taylor, I think I am going to do this solo. Good. Because, well, my choir instructor believes in me, so I'm going to believe in myself too. I'm going to go look for an outfit to Match these headbands. I'll see you later. <laughs> okay, Zach, I'll see you later. Rest City Kids, how amazing is it that God chooses unlikely people to do amazing things? He chooses people that others may think aren't qualified and he calls them to do these awesome things. When God first called David to be king, he was a small boy who took care of his family's sheep. He wasn't big or strong and he didn't look like any of the other kings, but that didn't matter to God. God doesn't care what we look like. He can use any of us to better his kingdom. Hey friends, guess what time it is? Yep, that's right. It's time for our new memory verse. Are you guys ready to learn? Awesome, okay, stand up and let's do it together. Isaiah 55, eight. For my thoughts are not your thoughts. Neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. Okay friends, for move number one, I need you guys to point to your head, just like this. Perfect. Next, I need you guys to keep pointing at your head, or you're gonna shake your head no, like you're telling someone no. Just like that. Awesome. For move number three, you guys are gonna point up. Simple, right? Move number four, you're gonna point to yourself. Perfect. And move number five, you're gonna point your hands to your mouth like you're shouting, like this. Great job, friends. Now, let's add the words. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. Good job, guys. Now, let's do it one more time, but let's do it faster. Are you ready? My thoughts are not your thoughts, Neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. Great job, friends. Keep practicing and don't forget to share this memory verse with your friends. Well, hey, I hope you guys have an amazing day. Wow, great job, friends. You're gonna have that memorized in no time. Well, I'm off to start decorating. Also, I think Zach was onto something when he picked out these headbands. Looks like I found my parade outfit already. Well, I'll see you guys next week, bye. We hope you enjoyed today's experience. Being connected is so important for our kids. We would love to continue to partner with you and encourage you as a family throughout the week as well. You can stay connected with Rest City Kids by signing up for our parent email. 
Just fill out the quick form at restcity.church/kids to sign up. The emails have encouragements from our kids pastor, activities, and much more. Be sure to check out this month's parent guide. It's loaded with questions and activities for you to do at home to continue to develop your child's relationship with God. Also, exciting news. We have added a special Big Show note sheet on our website. This can be downloaded and printed to help your child follow along with the lesson video from home. Check it out and have a great week.